Today, we are going to pray with all our faith, asking God to break every chain through the power of Psalm 91. Before we begin praying, it is very important that you type your prayer request in the comments. Let's pray for every bondage, everything that is trying to hinder your victory, to be broken. Every evil, in the name of Jesus, will be defeated. We will read Psalm 91 and together, with all our faith, we will pray to the Almighty Lord. In this prayer, I am certain that the Lord will deliver victory, blessings, and rewards. Let us pray together. With all our faith. It is also important that you share this prayer with seven friends, whether on Facebook, Instagram, or in your WhatsApp. Contacts and Groups Share this prayer with seven or more friends so that they may be blessed through this prayer. For when we bless someone's life, we are also blessed. So, bless the lives of your friends. Share this prayer with them. Let us read Psalm 91 with all our faith and then pray to the Lord. Amen. And Psalm 91 says the following, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but you shall not be harmed, only with your eyes you will witness the reward of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are my refuge, the Most High, and your dwelling place. No harm shall befall you, no plague shall come near your home. For he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon lions and cobras, you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, I will deliver him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to God for this powerful word. This is Psalm 91, and the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon your life. Type the following phrase in the comments, the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon my life at this moment. Place your hand on your heart and repeat this phrase with all your faith. The blessings of Psalm 91 are upon my life. Place your hand on your head and repeat this phrase with all your faith. The blessings of Psalm 91 are upon my life. Stretch your hands high and repeat with me. The blessings of Psalm 91 are in my home, in my family, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Claim this word. Claim your victory and in this moment, with all our faith, let us pray together to the Lord and claim all the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives. Therefore, in this moment, with all our faith, let us pray to the Sovereign God and Eternal Father, Creator of the heavens and the earth. In your holy and blessed presence, here we are. We are here in this moment of prayer, praying Psalm 91 with all our faith. God, I want to present to you every prayer request that has been typed in the comments of this video. Lord, may the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon the life of each person who requested prayer, help, and provision. May you send your angel to sever the ties, undo the entanglements, and break every bondage in their emotional life, financial life, spiritual life, and health. May all chains and constraints be shattered now in the name of Jesus Christ. 
May the blessings of Psalm 91 be confirmed in our lives, in our homes, in our families. God, in the name of Jesus, shelter us under the shadow of your wings. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon us. I lift up the financial life of everyone listening to me right now. May every bondage, every hindrance blocking financial blessings be broken, every evil be broken, every chain be broken, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask for your blessing upon the financial life of everyone listening to me at this hour. Prosper them, grant them victory, open doors of employment. Open the doors of employment. Lord, in the lives of your people, in the name of Jesus, for those who are unemployed. May the door of employment open, and may your name be glorified. For those who are in debt, may all their debts be paid in the name of Jesus. Open doors, prosper your sons and daughters, so that they may pay off their debts. I present those who have a business, may the Lord prosper them. For those seeking their first job, may the Lord open this door. For those who are studying, may the Lord bless their minds, may the Lord illuminate their minds. And may they prosper in their studies. God, may the blessings of Psalm 90 be upon the financial lives of everyone listening to me at this hour. Prosper them from the north, south, east, and west. Bring forth prosperity. Showers of blessings. Showers of victory. Showers of power upon the lives of everyone listening to me at this moment. God, I present to you every prayer request that has been typed in the comments of this video. No matter how simple the prayer request may be, I ask you, Lord, to perform miracles, to do the unprecedented, to accomplish the impossible, and grant victory to your servants, to your handmaidens, for the glory of your name. We ask you, Holy Spirit of Truth, Holy Spirit of God, I present to you, Lord. Every prayer request. Bring healing to those who are going through a period of illness, of disease. May every disease in the name of Jesus. Disappear now, may every lump disappear, may all pain in the body disappear, may all leg and arm pain vanish in the name of Jesus, may. Every digestive system ailment disappear now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May every sickness vanish in this moment and never return. Bring healing, bring restoration. Bless the health of your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask you. I also present to you, Lord. The romantic lives of those who are single, those who are dating, those who are engaged and married. May every bondage, every hindrance that tries to block, that tries to tie down the romantic victory of your people be broken. May every evil be rebuked. Bless the romantic lives of each one, bless for the glory and praise of your name those who are single and seeking marriage. May the Lord bless their romantic lives. May the Lord bless in a powerful way. May the romantic lives of each one listening to me be abundantly blessed, even in this year, in the name of Jesus. For marriages in crisis, marriages facing trials, may the Lord bring restoration to those marriages. May the Lord bless families. God, in the name of Jesus, may all evil crumble and may your name be glorified. Bless families. Lord, May the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon the romantic lives of your people. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be upon their finances, their health, and every area of their lives. May the Lord bless in a powerful way. Open the pathways. Open the doors, Lord, and grant victory to your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask because we believe in the power of your name. Your word says that whatever we ask in your name, believing, we shall receive. And in the name of Jesus, 
May the blessings of Psalm 91 be confirmed upon the lives of your people, and may your name be glorified in the victory of each one of us, for the glory and praise of your name. We ask that every bondage be broken, that every chain be broken, in the name of Jesus Christ. May everything that tries to interrupt, everything that tries to paralyze the victory of each one of us, everything that tries to block, be rebuked in the name of Jesus. May the walls crumble, may the giants fall in the name of Jesus Christ, we take possession, Lord, of the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives, in our homes, in our families, for your word reveals to us that those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my God, my refuge, my fortress, and in Him, I will trust, for He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge, His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you, only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are my refuge, the Most High, and your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague. Come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They will hold you up with their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him, and show him my salvation. May these blessings of Psalm 91 be upon our lives, upon our families, upon our homes, and upon our paths may our paths be opened, may the closed doors be opened, and may your name, the Eternal God, be glorified in our victory. May the Lord bless your people in every area of their lives with peace, blessing, victory, and prosperity. In the name of Jesus, we pray with all our faith, and we thank you in advance, because you, Lord, are the power, the glory, the strength, and the dominion forever and ever. Cover us, Lord, under the shadow of your wings. Guard our lives, protect our lives and our families. May your resplendent cloud of glory be upon us. May your sacred mantle be upon us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, Amen. And thanks be to God, thanks be to God who gives us the victory through the power of the name of Jesus Christ. Take possession of this word, take possession of this prayer. I invite you to subscribe to the channel. We are here every day, praying to the Lord. May God bless your life in a very special way, to each subscriber of this channel. Thank you very much, because together we are a prayer family, and our united prayers have great power. A big hug to your heart, and may the peace of the Lord reign over all of us. And remember, you were born to conquer and the blessings of Psalm 91 are upon your life. May God bless our lives in a very special way. The peace of the Lord Jesus, may God bless you. Thanks to God, He grants us victory through the power of God. I greet all my brothers and sisters with a holy and powerful peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Today, we will pray Psalm 90. We will be reading Psalm 90, verse by verse, and we will pray based on this. Psalm. 
I want this prayer to be a blessing in your life and in the life of another person. For this reason, please share this video with a friend, a family member, so they can also receive this prayer. Amen. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. I also want to send my greetings to all the subscribers of the channel and to all those who have activated the notifications. Thank you very much for being part of this prayer family. All the subscribers of the channel are already part of my prayer family, and I include all of you in my prayers. If you wish, feel free to comment below to make your prayer request. I always read the comments and present them in prayer. Before God Psalm 90 is a psalm written by Moses, a beautiful psalm that brings us a reflection and a very important life lesson. It is Psalm 90, in verse 1, it says, Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. Here, the prophet Moses writes this psalm. And in verse 1, he makes an important declaration, saying that God had been and continues to be his refuge from generation to generation, the refuge for the people of Israel. The faithfulness of our God is astounding. He is our refuge, the one who guards, delivers, and protects us. And in verse 2, Moses further says, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In this second verse, Moses, the psalmist, the prophet, speaks about the greatness of our God, that before all things were formed in the universe, God was God and is God from eternity to eternity. The prophet Isaiah says that the Lord is the Prince of Peace. He is the Father of Eternity, the Mighty and Powerful God. And in verse 3, Moses continues to write, saying, You turn people back to dust. Saying, Return to dust, you mortals. Because in verse 4, it says, a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Here, in verses 3 and 4 of Psalm 90, the psalmist Moses, a prophet of the Lord, shows how fleeting human life is and how quickly it passes. However, God, with his omniscience, his power, his exalted power, in verse 4, Moses brings a profound revelation about God. He says that for God, a thousand years is like a day. This shows us that God's time is different from our time. A thousand years may seem like a long time for us, but for God, a thousand years is like a day. This signifies how great, how powerful, how majestic our God is. The God we serve is a powerful, great, and exalted God, so much so that a thousand years for our God is like just one day. And in verse 5, he says even more, You sweep them away like a flood, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, in the evening it fades and withers. Here, in verses 5 and 6, Moses is referring to the fragility of humanity, how fragile human beings are. Men and women are like plants that grow, wither, and die. And how transient we are in the face of the greatness of our God. And in verse 7, he says, For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath, we are dismayed. In verse 8, you have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. Verse 9, all our days pass away under your wrath we finish our years with a moan. Here, Moses is emphasizing once again how fragile human life is and how much we need God. We need God to breathe, to live, to be happy. We need God for everything in this life. God is the refuge for the weary soul. God is the compass that guides the lost. God is the rock that remains steadfast and keeps our lives firm in His presence. Because of our fragility, we need to stand firm in the Lord so that we do not fall. 
And this Psalm 90 illustrates how fragile human life is. And in verse 10, it says, The years of our life are seventy, or even by reason of strength eighty, yet their span is but toil and trouble, they are soon gone, and we fly away. Here, in this tenth verse, Moses is saying that human beings reach seventy or eighty years with much weariness, and we can see how fleeting this life is. Do you remember that some time ago you were fifteen years old? There was a time when you were ten years old. And notice how quickly time has passed. Notice how swiftly time has flown by, and you didn't realize it passing. And that's what Psalm 90 wants to remind us of, how transient life is. We need to make the most of this. Life in the presence of God, in the presence of the people we love. And in verse 11, it says even more, who considers the power of your anger, and your wrath according to the fear of you. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Here, the psalmist, the prophet Moses, is asking God to teach him to number his days. What does that mean? To number our days. Notice that the wisest people, those who possess wisdom, are able to understand the dilemmas, the problems of life. Notice that fools, those who are not wise, cannot perceive life. They live as if they never truly lived. They live as fools. They live without comprehending the human existence. But those who fear God, those who seek God, can receive from God the wisdom to live. And that's why in this Psalm 90, Moses says, Teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. And in verse 13, Moses says, Return, O Lord. How long? Have pity. On your servants. In verse 14, Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Verse 15, Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Here, the psalmist, the prophet Moses, is referring to the period of struggle and trial that the people of Israel and Moses himself went through. Without a doubt, Moses wrote this psalm in light of all the anguish, battles, and evil he had experienced in his life. However, in Psalm 90, Moses is praying to God, asking for mercy, seeking God's help, and asking the Lord to look upon him. He acknowledges his insignificance, his humanity, and recognizes how great and majestic the Lord is. And in verse 16, Moses says, Let your work be shown to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Verse 17, Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us, yes. Establish the work of our hands. Here, in verse 17, the psalmist, the prophet Moses, is asking God to confirm the work of their hands. This means that often people do not recognize the work of our hands. But Moses is asking God to acknowledge the work of his hands. In other words, Moses is saying, God, see how much I have done for you. When we talk about hands, the prophet Moses represents it well. Because the Bible says that when Moses, the same one who wrote Psalm 90, was in battle, Joshua and Hur were there supporting him. And the Bible says that Moses' hands grew weary. As long as Moses held up his hands, the people of Israel were winning the war. But when Moses lowered his hands, the people of Israel would lose the battle. Aaron and Hur held up Moses' weary hands and extended them. And Moses prayed for the people, and they won the fight. In writing this Psalm 90, Moses is expressing a kind of spiritual weariness. He is presenting before God how small he is and how great God is in his life. That's why in Psalm 90, Moses says that for God, a thousand years is like a day. It's as if Moses wants to say, God, you are too powerful, 
and I am merely a speck before you. You are too majestic, and I am a grain of sand before you. I am transient in this life, but you, O God, are mighty. God delights in this. When we acknowledge how small we are, when we recognize our fragility before God, before the one who lives and reigns forever, that's when God manifests his power, his love, and his glory. God doesn't need the strong because he is already strong. God doesn't need the great because he is already great. God needs the weak to show those who think they are strong that he is a powerful God. That's why God used David. In human terms, David was the smallest, the weakest. Goliath, the giant in human terms, was the strongest, the most powerful. But God uses the weak to overcome the strong. God uses the small to defeat the great. God uses those who are not to confound those who think they are something. So, my friend, who is listening to me at this moment, this is the blessing of Psalm 90. God is affirming to our lives, I will confirm the work of your hands. I am your refuge. I am the one who guards you, says the Lord. For this reason, be encouraged, rejoice, and rest because God is the one who sustains you. God is the one who protects you. God is the one who delivers you. And the blessings of Psalm 90 are upon your life. There will be a reign of victory, a reign of grace, a reign of power, a reign of blessings in your life, in your family, in your home, and wherever you lay your hands. The Lord will confirm it as a blessing, as prosperity. Wherever your hands touch, the Lord will prosper. The Lord will bless. That's why in the last verse of Psalm 90, verse 17, Moses says, Confirm the work of our hands. Today, God is confirming the works of your hands, meaning God is confirming your blessing, your victory. God is confirming the open door in your life. God is confirming the honor of God in your story. Claim this word. Take hold of the blessings of Psalm 90 in your life. Amen. At this moment, I want to offer a prayer based on Psalm 90. I want to pray for you, for your family, for your home, for your work, for your business. Please type your name below in the comments. I want to offer this special prayer for your life. If you can, close your eyes at this moment. Focus on God, and let us pray. Sovereign God and Eternal Father, Creator of the heavens and the ends of the earth, in this moment of prayer, we come before you and ask for your blessing and provision. God, we have just read Psalm 90, verse by verse, and we want to claim all the blessings that are found in Psalm 90. Lord, we ask you to confirm the work of our hands. Confirm, O oh God, the blessings that we need to receive from your hand. Remove from our path anything that blocks, anything that hinders our victory. Grant us, Lord, your salvation, your deliverance, and the rewards that come from your throne, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. In this moment of prayer, I pray for your servant who is listening to me now, for your servant who is hearing me at this hour, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Open every closed door and grant victory to your people. We ask you, Lord, for your deliverance. Comfort the hearts. Refresh the souls, O God, in the name of Jesus. For all those who are suffering for any reason, for all those who have lost, for all those who have failed, God, in the name of Jesus, console, comfort, and lift them up in the power of your might, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Visit the families, visit the homes with your peace, with your love. I pray to you, Lord, come and bring your provision, your answer, your love, your victory for the glory of your name, 
we ask you in prayer. Pour out your love upon us. Lord, pour out your infinite mercies, your infinite graces upon us. Pour them upon our lives, upon our family members, upon our homes, for the glory and praise of your name. We ask and desire this. We thank you, we thank you for deliverance, we thank you for healing, we thank you for open doors. We thank you for everything you are doing and everything you will do in our lives. Release upon us, Lord, an abundance of days. Release upon us health and prosperity and the blessings of the Psalms in our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask and thank you in advance. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Thank God, and may God bless your life. May God bless your family and bless your home. Share this prayer with someone you love, with someone you care about. It is always good to share the good things in life, and prayer is something good for our soul, for our spirit. I will conclude here. Today we are going to pray the prayer, Psalm 18, and it will be a blessing in your life and in your family. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe to receive prayers and messages of faith. For those of you who are already subscribed, please share this video with others, a friend, a family member, so that they too may be blessed by this prayer. May God bless you in a special way. If you wish, make your prayer request, and we will present it before God. Amen. We will be reading Psalm 18, providing some explanations of this psalm, and we will also be praying based on Psalm 18. Psalm 18 says the following, a psalm of David. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. In these verses, we can see this beautiful declaration of love from the psalmist David to God. He declares that the Lord is his shield, strength, and refuge in his life. We can apply this to our own lives and understand that God is your shield, strength, and refuge. In verse 3, the psalmist says further, I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. The pangs of death surrounded me, and the floods of ungodliness made me afraid. The sorrows of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry came before his ears. In these verses, we can see the psalmist declaring that snares of death and traps were set against his life. However, the Lord delivered him because he called upon the Lord in times of distress. This often happens in our lives as well. But God is faithful to break the snare and grant us victory because he is our shield, the one who gives us strength to overcome. And in the following verse, verse 7, it tells us even more. Then the earth shook and trembled, the foundations of the mountains also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Here the psalmist is speaking about the wrath of God, his indignation, and the earth shook with the fury of the Lord. And in the following verse, verse 8, it depicts God's response to the enemies of David. Here the psalmist declares in verse 8 the stance of God in the face of wickedness, in the face of injustice. It says, smoke went up from his nostrils, and devouring fire from his mouth, coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also, and came down with darkness under his feet. He rode upon a cherub, and flew, he soared upon the wings of the wind. Here the psalmist is showing that God was indignant with the things done against him. 
That is why the Lord. He has this posture of justice towards all those who rise against the anointed of the Lord. And you are anointed by God, you are anointed. Of the Lord, and whoever touches you touches God. Whoever touches you touches your Creator, who is the Lord of hosts. That is why the Bible says that we are the Bride of Jesus. Whoever touches the Bride touches the Groom. That is why the Bible says that the Lord is our Father, and whoever touches the Son or the Daughter touches the Father. So whoever touches you touches God. That is why the Lord is your shield, our shield. And in verse 11, the psalmist says even more, He made darkness his secret place, his canopy around him was dark. Waters and thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him, his thick clouds passed with hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered them. Foe, lightnings in abundance, and he vanquished them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, the foundations of the world were uncovered at your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. In these verses we just read, we can see a God of justice acting in favor of those who serve him, to the point that the psalmist says that the Lord drew him out of many waters. These many waters that the psalmist is referring to are the struggles and adversities he was facing. And if you are going through any struggle, any persecution, know that the Lord will draw you out of the many waters. In other words, He will save you with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. That is why in verse 17, the psalmist says, He delivered me from my strong enemy, and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place, He delivered me because He delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in His sight. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all His judgments were before me, and I did not put away His statutes from me. I was also blameless before Him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in His sight. With the merciful you will show yourself merciful, with a blameless man you will show yourself blameless. In these verses, the psalmist is showing how just our God is, how mighty our God is, how majestic our God is. Here, he is demonstrating the goodness of the Father towards him, and he is declaring how powerful God was in his life. And in verse 26, he continues by saying, With the pure you will show yourself pure, and with the devious you will show yourself shrewd. Here, in verse 20 and 26, it speaks of how with the merciful, God will show mercy, and with the sincere man, God will show sincerity. With the pure, God will show purity, and with the wicked, God will show cunningness. Here, the psalmist is referring to God as a just God, a God of justice. God will do good to those who do good, and God will bring harm to those who do evil. And in verse 27, he says further, For you will save the humble people, but will bring down haughty looks. You are my lamp, O Lord, my God, shine forth in my darkness. In this verse, the psalmist is saying that God will bring light into his darkness. And perhaps you may find yourself in a similar situation, going through a moment of darkness, a gloomy time. But God is saying, I will bring light to your darkness, and I will bring clarity to your life. The light of the Lord will reach your house, your life, and you will glorify the name of the one who lives and reigns forever. This psalm further reveals in verse 29, 
for by you I can run against a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. The way of God is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. It is a shield for all who trust in him. 4. Who is God, except the Lord? And who is a rock, except our God? God is the one who strengthens me and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on my high places. He trains my hands for battle so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. We need to understand that the author of this psalm is David, and that is why he uses this language of war as if he were going into a fight, a war, a battle. This same David was the one who defeated the Philistine army, the same one who defeated the giant Goliath. You know the story very well, and here the psalmist David is declaring that it is God who gives him strength, who surrounds him with strength. And God is doing the same thing in your life, my sister and my brother. God is giving you strength to overcome, empowering your arms to break iron bows, bronze bows. The Lord is giving you strength to rise above difficulties, to surpass afflictions and distress. Receive strength from God. And Psalm 18 says even more in verse 35, You have given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand upholds me, and your gentleness makes me great. You enlarge my steps under me, and my ankles do not give way. I pursued my enemies and overtook them, I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them so that they could not rise, they fell beneath my feet. Here the psalmist is still using the language of war. When he went into battle, the Lord granted him strength, and he defeated his enemies. Bringing it to the present day, it is no different. We have spiritual enemies, forces of evil that fight against us 24-7. But God, the God of David, the God who manifested himself in David through this Psalm 18 that we are reading, he will give you strength to overcome your enemies, to break through barriers, to conquer difficulties, and to defeat your enemies. And he makes a very important declaration in verse 39. He says, For you equipped me with strength for the battle, you made those who rise against me sink under me. And in verse 38, he speaks of how his enemies fell beneath his feet. So, in these verses 38 and 39, we can See that David's enemies had fallen at his feet, and even Jesus himself said that the Lord grants us power to tread on the forces of evil. Hey! My sister and my brother who are listening to me right now, at this moment, God is giving you strength to overcome evil, to tread on serpents and scorpions, and all the power of the evil one. Receive spiritual strength right now to conquer the darkness, to overcome the evil that may surround you. And in the following verses, it says more, You made my enemies turn their backs in flight, and I destroyed those who hated me. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them, to the Lord, but he did not answer. I beat them as fine. As wind-blown dust, I trampled them like mud in the streets. You have delivered me from the attacks of the people, you have made me the head of nations. People I did not know now serve me, foreigners cower before me, as soon as they hear of me, they obey me. They all lose heart, they come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God my Savior. He is the God who avenges me, who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. You exalted me above my foes, from a violent man you rescued me. Therefore, I will praise you, Lord, among the nations, I will sing the praises of your name. This is the last verse of Psalm 18. The psalmist declares, he gives his king great victories, he shows unfailing love to his anointed, to David and to his descendants forever. 
In this Psalm 18, the psalmist is using language of battles. That's why he talks about pursuing and defeating the enemy. But we know very well that our true enemies are not the people who speak ill of us, who envy us, who gossip about our lives. Our true enemies are the forces of evil, the malevolent spirits that fight against our lives. And this Psalm 18 is a psalm of war, a psalm of battle. Just as God anointed, strengthened, and empowered the psalmist to win the fights and wars, he will do the same in my life and in your life. God will give you spiritual capacity to overcome the spiritual battles you may be facing. Just as God empowered the psalmist in Psalm 18, God will also empower you to break down walls and conquer the forces of evil. And right now, I want to pray for blessings. May the blessings in Psalm 18 come down upon your life, your home, and your family. Close your eyes as I pray for you in this moment. Let's pray, Holy Spirit of Truth. We have just read Psalm 18, and we believe that you are the one who equips our hands, who trains our arms, so that we can break bronze. Bows. You are the one who enables us to leap over walls. You are the one who grants us strength. Just as the Lord anointed, equipped, and strengthened the psalmist David in Psalm 18, I ask you, in the lives of my sister and my brother who is listening to me, strengthen, equip, and grant victory. May the blessings of Psalm 18 be upon their home, their family, and the life of your daughter who is listening, your son who is hearing in the name of Jesus. May your Holy Spirit come and do the supernatural. Do what the doctor cannot do, do what the lawyer cannot do, do what the psychologist cannot do. Go, Lord, go there, Father, and perform the supernatural, the miracle in the lives of your sons and daughters, in the name of Jesus Christ. Repeat these words with me, I take hold of all the blessings of Psalm 18. I take hold of my victory. The Lord is my strength, and in Him I will trust. He gives me strength to leap over walls. He gives me strength to overcome my enemies. He gives me strength to surpass my limits for the glory of God and the blessings of Psalm 18. May they be upon your life, your home, your family, and may the Holy Spirit of God strengthen and enlighten you, guiding your steps to make the right decisions and to overcome and defeat the enemies that come your way. Receive strength from the Father and the Holy Spirit to overcome, courage and encouragement to surpass your limits. I'll end here. I greet all my brothers and sisters with a holy and sweet peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Today, we will pray Psalm 7, and we believe that this prayer will be a blessing to you and your entire family. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. Also, feel free to share your prayer requests, and we will always pray for your life. We read the comments and continuously pray for all prayer requests. Share this prayer with a friend, and it will surely be a blessing in their life. Let's pray this prayer, and God will certainly bless us in a special way. Let's read Psalm 7 and see what God wants to speak to us through this beautiful psalm written by David. It says in verse 1 of Psalm 7, O Lord my God, in you I put my trust, save me from all those who persecute me and deliver me. In this verse, the psalmist starts the psalm by asking the Lord for deliverance and affirming that his trust is in God. Our trust should be in God, not in human strength. It is God who performs miracles, surprises us, 
and showers us with rich blessings. Our trust must be in God because He is the one who delivers us. In verse 1, the psalmist asks God to deliver him from those who persecute him. Perhaps you are experiencing a moment of persecution. Sometimes, persecution is not physical, it can be spiritual, in the spiritual realm. But God is saying through this psalm that He will deliver us, protect us, and be with us. The psalmist makes this plea and request in verse 1, O Lord my God, in you I put my trust, save me from all those who persecute me and deliver me. In verse 2, he continues, saying, Lest they tear me like a lion, rending me in pieces, while there is none to deliver. In verse 3, he says, O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there is iniquity in my hands. In verse 4, he says, if I have repaid evil to him who was at peace with me, or have plundered my enemy without cause. In these verses, 3, 4, and 5, the psalmist is justifying himself before God. He is saying, Lord, if I have done something wrong, let me pay for that mistake. But here, the psalmist is presenting himself to the Lord, stating that he hadn't done anything wrong. However, if by any chance he had, he asks God to judge him and bring justice. So, the psalmist is seeking God's justification in his life, asking for God's mercy. In verse 6, the psalmist says, Arise, O Lord, in your anger, lift yourself up because of the rage of my enemies, rise up for me to the judgment you have commanded. In verse 6, the psalmist is asking God to intervene, to act and execute judgment as he has commanded. The disciples were in the boat, and the wind was strong. The boat was about to sink, and the disciples were afraid of dying at sea. Meanwhile, Jesus was sleeping in the stern of the boat. The disciples woke Jesus up, saying, Master, wake up. We are perishing. This expression from the psalmist in verse 6, Arise. O Lord, is the same expression the disciples were using in that storm. They were saying, Wake up, Master, because we are about to perish. The Bible says that Jesus got up and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. Jesus then rebuked the disciples, saying, O oh, you of little faith, why are you afraid? Who is in the boat with you is greater than the winds and the storms. The one in your boat is Jesus. The winds can blow in your boat, the storms, and the waves of the sea can try to sink your boat, your life, but Jesus is in the boat with you, and this boat will not fall, it will not sink. That's what the psalmist is saying, Arise, O Lord, in your anger, lift yourself up because of the rage of my oppressors, awake for me to the judgment you have commanded. The psalmist is asking, Wake up, Father, help me, Lord, because David was facing a very difficult situation. He was a man of war, constantly engaged in battles, and his enemies wanted to destroy him at any cost. That's why David is crying out, asking the Lord for mercy and deliverance, requesting that God brings the answer against those opposing him, rising up against him, persecuting him. This is a clear response that God cares about our feelings. If someone is persecuting you or slandering you, be calm. Put it in God's hands because the answer comes from the Lord. That's what the psalmist is expressing in Psalm 7. In verse 7, the psalmist says, Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God tests the hearts and minds. In these verses, the psalmist continues justifying himself before God. In verse 9, 
The psalmist says that God is just and tests the hearts and minds, meaning God knows our hearts and minds. God knows you fully, deeply, completely. God knows you inside out. God knows you inside and out. He knows your limits. He knows how far you can go. He knows how much you can bear. God knows the extent of your strength, and I want to tell you that you are stronger than you imagine. You are a warrior woman, a warrior man. You have faced so many battles, so many problems and adversities in life, and look, you are still standing. God protects us. In verse 10, the psalmist says, My shield is with God, who saves the upright in heart. God is your shield, my sister. God is your shield, my brother. Every arrow launched against you hits this shield and falls. Every curse thrown at you hits this shield and falls. Every plague that can be cast upon you hits this shield and falls. Before you stands a powerful shield, and the name of that shield is God. Nothing can penetrate the shield of our protection, and that's why the psalmist in verse 10 of Psalm 7 says, My shield is with God, who saves the upright in heart. In verse 11, God is described as a just judge, a God who is angry every day. In this verse, we can see that God has emotions. He can be sad, he can be happy, he can be angry. We can see this in verse 11 where it says, God is a just judge, a God who is angry every day. So we can see that the last thing we want is to fall into the hands of an angry God. When God is angry, the best thing we can do is cry out for his mercy. Anyone who harms you angers God. Anyone who fights against you angers God. The Bible says that God became angry with Egypt because they mistreated his chosen people, and God sent ten plagues upon Egypt. That was God's anger directed at Egypt because they mistreated his chosen people. So anyone who mistreats you, anyone who rises against you, will have to face the wrath of an angry God. That's why the Bible says, Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. You are anointed by God. You are anointed by the Lord. Whoever touches you, touches God. Whoever touches you will have to face the wrath of the Father. That's why we don't need to respond to those who rise against us. The Lord answers for us. Of course, we are taught to love our enemies. Jesus taught us to pray for those who persecute us. But that doesn't mean that divine justice will not be served. God is love, but he is also just, as the Bible says. This psalm, Psalm 7, speaks of divine justice. That's why in verse 11, the psalmist says, God is a just judge, a God who is angry every day. And in verse 12, the psalmist continues, saying, If a man does not repent, God will sharpen his sword. He has bent his bow and made it ready. The bow is prepared and equipped here to show us that when a man does not convert, he blasphemes against God. The wrath of the Lord is set before this man, which is why verse 12 tells us that if a man does not repent, God will sharpen his sword. Throughout history, we have seen many characters who blasphemed and spoke ill of God, and they paid a high price. We can see King Nebuchadnezzar who blasphemed before God and was made to eat grass. We can also see King Herod, who did not give glory to God. One should never mess with a man of God or a woman of God who lives a life of prayer. Don't touch a woman who spends her time on her knees praying. 
Don't mess with a man who spends his time on his knees praying because God has a stake in their lives. And when you and I fight against a man of God or a woman of God, we pay a heavy price. If you are a praying woman or a praying man, you have a protective shield before you, and whoever touches you, touches God himself. Psalm 7 shows us and reveals this truth to us. Of course, we do not need to and should not wish harm upon anyone. We should not desire ill for anyone. However, the Lord's justice must be served. Those who speak ill of God, those who blaspheme the Lord, cannot go unpunished. God punishes those who rise against the chosen ones of the Father, and you are chosen by God. You are chosen by God, and He is the one who guarantees your response when someone defames you, when someone speaks ill of you. You don't need to respond because it is God who will answer for you. Verse 12 and verse 13 state that if a man does not convert, he challenges God's sword. His bow is already armed, and he has prepared deadly weapons. He has aimed his fiery arrows against the persecutors. Look at verse 13, he, referring to the man who does not convert, has prepared deadly weapons. The text is saying that God has prepared deadly weapons for those who do not convert, and he will put his fiery arrows into action against the persecutors. The worst thing in the world is to be an enemy of God. It is written in the scriptures that whoever loves the world is an enemy of God. Those who rise against the Lord's anointed are enemies of God, and anyone who opposes you is an enemy of God. While we should ask for mercy, the justice lies with God. His will is carried out. In verse 14, it says, Behold, the wicked man conceives evil and is pregnant with mischief and gives birth to lies. Verse 15 is very interesting. It says, He makes a pit, digging it out, and falls into the hole that he has made. So, whoever prepares a pit for you, whoever sets a trap for you, will fall into the same trap they prepared for your life. The one who dug the pit will fall into the pit they made for you. That's what this verse is telling us. Verse 15 is telling us that he dug a pit and made it deep, and fell into the hole he had made. In other words, whoever prepared traps and pits against your life will fall into the same pit, the same trap they prepared for you. This reminds me of Daniel. The Bible tells us that Daniel was a man of prayer, praying three times a day. The adversaries and persecutors of Daniel devised an evil plan to destroy his life by persuading the king to issue a decree that anyone who worshipped another god would be thrown into the den of lions. They spread false information that Daniel was worshipping another god. As the king had made the decree and could not revoke his words, these men conspired against Daniel because they were his opponents. They successfully executed their wicked plan against Daniel and threw him into the den of lions. The Bible states that Daniel spent the entire night in the den, and when the den was opened, the king saw Daniel alive among the lions. The ones who had thrown Daniel into the den were devoured by the lions themselves. Those who plot against your life, those who scheme against you, will fall into their own trap. So, do not be afraid and do not worry. Nothing is better than taking one day at a time. Remember Joseph, the same ones who threw him into a pit, the ones who sold him for twenty pieces of silver, ended up needing Joseph in the future when he became a governor in Egypt. And God will do the same in your life and in my life. The Lord will honor you in the presence of those who persecute and mistreat you. Therefore, do not fear. In verse 15, 
the psalmist is saying that he dug a pit and made it deep, and fell into the hole he had made. And in verse 16, it goes even further, saying that his mischief will return upon his own head, and his violence will come down on his own skull. The psalmist is saying that the violence of the persecutors will fall upon themselves. And in verse 17, the psalmist concludes the psalm by saying, I I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and I will sing praises to the name of the Most High. It is clear that we must follow the teachings of Jesus, love our neighbors as ourselves, and pray for those who persecute and mistreat us. However, this does not mean that God's justice will not be served. This Psalm 7 shows us and reveals that God is the one who is just, a righteous judge who judges our causes. At this moment, I want to offer a special prayer for you. You who are facing persecutions, slander, defamation, and going through difficult and complicated times in your life. You who need a special blessing in your family and your home. I want to pray for your life and ask God to have mercy on you and grant you a special blessing and victory. May the name of Jesus be glorified in your victory and testimony that you will soon share. Let us pray. Sovereign God, Eternal Father, Creator of the ends of the earth, we have just read Psalm 7. God, we can confirm your righteousness recorded in this psalm. In this moment, O God of mercy and new beginnings, we stand in your presence because we trust in your power and mercy. In your outstretched hand towards us. Have mercy on us, Lord. We present before you all the followers. All the slanderers, all the gossipers who speak ill of our lives. We place them all in your hands, and we ask that you have mercy. But also that you demonstrate that you are with us. Show, Lord, that you are a God of justice who loves truth and righteousness. We ask you, God, to bring the answer for us. God, answer for us, so that we do not have to respond with our own strength, for we have you as our advocate. Your word says that you are our advocate, that our fight is not against flesh and blood. Therefore, we ask that every force of evil using people against us may fall to the ground under the shadow of your omnipotence. We ask for your blessing upon our lives, our homes, our families, O Lord. May you bring an immediate answer in the lives of your sons and daughters. We ask for your mercy. We ask, Lord God, for your forgiveness and your grace. We forgive, Lord. We forgive all those who have offended us. We forgive those who persecute us. We release your forgiveness, Lord, upon the lives of those who speak ill of us, upon the lives of those who persecute and slander us. We forgive. We release forgiveness upon their lives. May you show, Lord, that you are with us, that you are a God of wonders, a God of awe-inspiring power. Just as you exalted Joseph, not as an act of vengeance against his brothers, but to save the people of Israel, may you exalt us, O God. Not to trample upon those who have trampled upon us, but that we may extend our hand to those who have hurt us. May we release your love and show them that we are different, that we do not repay evil with evil, but with kindness. In the name of Jesus, we ask for your blessing, your providence, and your answer, for the glory and praise of your name. We ask and we thank you. Amen. Thank God, my sister and my brother and rest assured, simply forgive those who have spoken ill of you. Forgive those who have mocked you. Forgive, because they do not know what they are doing. Be at peace, and forgive. 
Because God will show them that He, the Lord, is with you. God will show all those who have mocked you that He is with you. But you don't need to seek revenge, you don't need to repay evil with evil. You need to repay evil with goodness. So, leave it in God's hands because the answer comes from the Lord. Amen. And remember, you were born to conquer and live out every promise of God. The Lord is with you. Thanks be to God who grants us victory, and may God bless you, victorious ones, in Christ Jesus. Today, we will be praying Psalm 20. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe and activate the notifications. Share this video with a friend, as it will surely be a blessing for you and for someone else's life. In this prayer, we will be praying this powerful psalm, Psalm 20. Verse 1 says, May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble, may the name of the God of Jacob defend you. The psalmist declares that God will hear you on the day of trouble. What is this day of trouble? It's the day when you feel sad, downcast, and when you experience failure. It's the day when you think that perhaps God has forgotten about you. However, verse 1 of this psalm shows us that God will listen to us on the day of trouble, and the name of the God of Jacob will protect us. Do not fear the afflictions and problems that may come against you in life. Understand and comprehend that God is the one who protects and defends you. This declaration from the psalmist, David, clearly shows us that God can listen to you on the day of trouble, and the name of the God of Jacob will protect you. What is the name of the God of Jacob? God revealed himself to Moses in Exodus 3, saying, I am who I am. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When Moses asked for his name, God said to tell the people that, I am, has sent him. I am, means that God is everything that his people need him to be. If his people need bread, he is the bread of life. If his people need peace, he is peace. If his people need relief, he is the relief. If his people need forgiveness, he is forgiveness. If his people need healing, he is the healer. This is what? God was telling Moses, I am. I am everything you need me to be. God is saying to you, I am everything you need me to be. If you need healing, I am your healing. If you need deliverance, I am your deliverance. If you need protection, I am your protection. The psalmist is saying, may the name of the God of Jacob protect you. Know that this powerful name protects your home and your family. It is absolute 24-hour protection from God in your life. You have a God who is a protector, a God who never sleeps. God is awake, watching over your life 24-7. Verse 2 of Psalm 20 tells us even more, May He send you help from His sanctuary and give you support from Zion. In this verse, we can see the blessing of God guarding and protecting us. The psalmist declares that help will come from God's sanctuary, from Zion. The divine promise for our lives is that the Lord will provide help and provision and will sustain us from Zion. God is your sustainer and your helper, always present in times of affliction and distress. Verse 3 also adds, May he remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. This verse quickly refers to your work routine. Yes, soon you will give God a different time through platforms and applications. It declares, 
remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifices. This means that every offering you give to God is remembered. No offering is in vain. When I talk about offerings, I mean offerings in all aspects of life. There is the offering of time when you dedicate your time to protect, help, and counsel someone. There is the offering of money when you assist the needy or support a project or work being done. To God, who remembers all our offerings and accepts our sacrifices, our fasts, our prayers, no sacrifice is in vain, no offering is in vain, and God certainly rewards those who do His work. This verse, verse 3, clearly shows us that. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifices. In verse 4, it says, May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. The psalmist declares that God will grant according to your heart's desire. There are other verses in the Bible that say, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. There are different types of victories that can come into our lives. There is the victory that we need, the victory that we deserve, and the victory that we desire. The victory that we need is the one that God gives us every day, providing deliverance, food on the table, clothes in the wardrobe, and sustenance. That's why the psalmist said, I have been young, and now am old yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. In other words, God will always grant you the blessing and victory that you need. There is also the victory that we deserve, the victory that comes to us based on our merits, and sometimes even when we don't deserve it, God still grants us victory. Why? Because that's called God's mercy and divine grace. And finally, there is the victory that we desire. I invite you to comment below and share what your heart desires. Make your prayer requests because we will also pray for them. Many people believe that God doesn't grant the desires of our hearts, but that is a big misconception. God does grant the desires of our hearts as long as those desires don't harm or hurt anyone else. If you have a desire to own a house, God can and, with faith, will give you that house. If you have a desire in your heart to have a car, God can and will open doors for you to obtain a car. If you desire restoration in your marriage, God can and will bring that restoration. If you are single and desire to get married, God can and will do it. God cares about our feelings. You serve a God who cares about what you feel. You serve a God who cares about your pain, your sorrows, and God cares about the desires of your heart, that's why the Bible says that God is the bridegroom and the church is the bride. Of course, the bridegroom cares about the desires of the bride. The Bible also says that we are children and God is our Father, and a father cares about the desires of his children. Jesus said, If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Imagine how good and merciful God is. This verse 4 speaks to this. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. That's why we need to have a mindset of faith. What is a mindset of faith? It's believing that the impossible will happen, believing in the supernatural, believing that you are born to overcome. Believing that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That is a mindset of faith. And that's why verse 4 of Psalm 20 says, May he grant you your heart's desire, fulfill all your plans. I ask you, my friend, what are your petitions before the Lord? What have you been asking God for in prayer, perhaps even tearfully? 
Verse 5 tells us even more. We will rejoice in your salvation, and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. This verse is beautiful and important in our lives. It says, we will rejoice in your salvation. We need to experience the joy of being saved. I believe that is the greatest conviction of a Christian, the joy of salvation. But it's not just the joy of salvation. The Lord wants to give you more. The second part of verse 5 says, May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. My friend, what are your petitions before the Lord? What have you been asking God in prayer, maybe even with tears? This verse 5 shows us that the Lord is willing to satisfy your request, no matter how impossible it may seem to you. That's why it is important for us to ask God. The psalmist shows us this in Psalm 20, and Jesus himself also tells us in Matthew 7. Ask, and it will be given to you, seek, and you will find, knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Know that your request before God is not in vain. Have this conviction in your soul. Verse 6 of Psalm 20 tells us. Chapter 20, And now the Lord saves his anointed one, he will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Look at this beautiful and marvelous verse, my brothers and sisters. This verse 6 of Psalm 20 is so beautiful. Let me read it again. Look at how beautiful it is. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed, he will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. First, God saves his anointed. Who is anointed by God? You are anointed by God. You, who are listening to me, are anointed of the Father. You are anointed of the Lord. The Lord has anointed you with spiritual oil. In those times, the anointing was oil prepared by the priest to consecrate objects and also people. Once a person was consecrated, they became anointed of God. And you, who are listening to me, are consecrated by the Father. You are consecrated by the Lord. The Lord has anointed you with spiritual oil. And verse 6 tells us, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. God saves those whom he consecrates, and you are saved by this consecration, by this divine grace in your life. Verse 6 also tells us, He will answer him from his holy heaven. It means that even though God is in heaven, in his glorious heaven, he will hear you from heaven. From the heavens, he listens to you. And with the saving strength of his right hand, because the right hand is the strong hand, right? My right arm, I will save you. And who is the right hand of God? It is Jesus, the saving strength, the saving power of the right hand is Jesus. Jesus is ready to save you, ready to lift you up, ready to restore you. And at this very moment, the Lord restores your strength, restores your energy, restores your joy, restores your happiness in the Lord. Verse 7 tells us, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. This verse 7 is also another beautiful verse. The psalmist David is saying, Some trust in chariots and horses, which represent human strength and earthly resources, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Some trust in chariots and others in horses. In those times, when an army went to war, they went with shields, with swords. They trusted their chariots, 
they trusted their horses, they trusted their weapons. And here, the psalmist is using a language of war. He is saying that some trust in chariots and others in horses. In the battles of life, in the wars of life, many people trust in their intelligence, in their abilities, in their attributes, in their tools. But the psalmist is saying, some trust in chariots and others in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. In other words, it's like saying, my trust is not in chariots or horses. My trust is not in the sword or the shield or the spear. My trust is in God who made the heavens and the earth. Trust in the Lord and not in man. Trust in God, trust in God. Do not trust in human weapons, do not trust in human attributes, because only God is salvation. And that's why in verse 8, the psalmist says, They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Oh, glory to God! This verse, this Psalm 20, is so beautiful, right? All the Psalms are beautiful, but this Psalm 20 and this verse 8 are marvelous. The verse 8 says, let me read it again, they have bowed down and fallen. There are many people bowing down and falling. When they created the statue to be worshipped, the Bible says that Miss Hale, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow down before the statue. The book of Daniel tells us this story. It actually shows that those who bow down to the world, those who bow down to sin, they are actually falling. That's why the text says in verse 8. Psalm 20, Stand firm and do not bow before sin, the system, or the world. Do not bow before the corruption of this world, the adulteries, or the lies. That's why many people are bowing to sin and falling. But we, we rise and stand upright. The world may bow down, but the church stands triumphantly in the presence of God. And you stand in the presence of the Lord. Remain standing in the strength of the Holy Spirit. In verse 9, it concludes with, Save us, Lord. Hear us when we call. Here, the psalmist makes a declaration and a request to God. Save us, Lord, as if to say, come to our aid, bring relief to our souls, deliver us from this difficult time, so that we may remain standing in your presence. We are calling upon the King. Psalm 20 is a beautiful psalm that shows the psalmist's trust in God. It shows that many trust in chariots and horses, in their power and strength, but we trust in God, we trust in the Lord, and it is He who enables us to stand in His presence. I invite you to join me in praying the prayer of Psalm 20. Share your prayer requests in the comments below, what you desire from God. As Psalm 20 says, the Lord is interested in granting you the desires of your heart. Let us take hold of all the blessings recorded in this wonderful psalm, let us claim these blessings so that the name of the Lord may be glorified in our victories, glorified in our lives. The honor of God is coming to you, the blessings of the Lord are coming into your life. Let us pray, close your eyes, Focus on God, and pray with me. Holy Spirit of Truth, we have just read and learned from this psalm. May I humbly ask for the blessings of Psalm 20 in our lives. We ask for your protection, O God, and that you keep us standing in your presence, for we believe that you are faithful to bring about the supernatural. O God, I am not asking for much. I am asking for what is necessary. In the name of Jesus, for this woman and this man who listens to me at this moment, pour out your blessings upon their lives. May the blessings of Psalm 20 be upon him and her, 
the beatitudes of this powerful psalm. May you grant, according to your will, the desires of the hearts of your servant and your servant, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the blessings of Psalm 20 come upon our lives, for many bow down and fall, but we will mention your name, Lord, your majestic, grand, infallible, and invincible name. We take possession of the blessings, Lord, of Psalm 20 in our lives. Enter with providence, grant victory to your people, open the closed doors, and bring forth the honor that comes from your glory, the honor that comes from your throne, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask and thank you, Amen, and thanks be to God. Take hold of each verse of this Psalm 20, believe that you were born to overcome. Many may bow down and fall, but we remain standing in the presence of the Lord. Repeat this phrase with me, I am standing in the presence of God. Say it again, I am standing in the presence of God. If you are a woman, say, I am a victorious woman in Christ Jesus. If you are a man, say, I am a victorious man in Christ Jesus. Take possession of your blessing and remember that you were born to overcome and live the promises of God in your life. I'll be ending here. A big hug from your friend, and may the peace of the Lord be in your heart. Before we pray and read Psalm 37 verse by verse, I want to invite you to share this psalm, this prayer, with a friend who also needs to hear the Word of God. Put your prayer request in the comments, I always read the comments and pray for all the requests, no matter how simple they may be. Make your prayer request, and we will present it before the Lord. Psalm 37 is a beautiful and meaningful psalm, just like the other psalms. Let us understand the significance of each verse and offer a prayer, seeking the blessings of Psalm 37 in our lives. Psalm 37 is straightforward to comprehend, so I will be precise and direct in explaining each verse. Verse 1 tells us not to be indignant because of evildoers or envy those who practice wickedness. The psalmist reminds us that we should distance ourselves from wrongdoers and not seek to emulate them. In verse 2, the psalmist explains why we should not admire or envy evildoers. They will be cut down like grass and wither like green plants. We can witness this happening every day, as those who practice wickedness are judged by God. For this reason, we should rejoice in being in the presence of the Lord. In verse 3, the psalmist declares, Trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. This verse is fascinating as it reveals that when we trust in God and do what is right, we will dwell in the land and be provided for abundantly. It is a testament to the faithfulness and provision of the Lord. Let us continue reading and meditating on Psalm 37, finding solace, guidance, and encouragement in its verses. Remember to share this psalm and prayer with others, as we all need the uplifting power of God's Word in our lives. Trust in the Lord, do good, and dwell in His blessings. May the message of Psalm 37 resonate deeply within our hearts, bringing us hope, strength, and peace. Truly, we shall be nourished. This reveals that prosperity awaits us not only in heaven but also here on earth. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, when Jesus teaches us to say, Your kingdom come, he is illustrating that the blessings of the heavenly kingdom should also be established here on earth. In verse 3, we witness this prosperity that God bestows upon those who trust in Him. 
Furthermore, in verse 4, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. This verse is truly marvelous. Let me read it once more. Look at how profound this revelation is, to delight in the Lord means to rest in Him, to trust Him wholeheartedly. The word states that when we delight in the Lord, He will grant us the desires of our hearts. So whatever your heart desires, know that God is interested in fulfilling it. God is a loving Father who cares for us, understands us, and, like any loving Father, desires to see the happiness of His child. Thus, God wants your happiness too. In verse 5, it says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. This verse reminds me of Jesus' words in Matthew 6 verse 33, where He said, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. What are these things that Jesus was referring to? They include a home, work, family, marriage, prosperity. All these things will be added to you when you seek the kingdom of God and fully surrender your life to the Lord. I promise you, when you place all your paths in God's hands, He will work the supernatural miracle of blessings and prosperity in your life. That's what the psalm is all about. That's what verse 5 is conveying. May these verses touch your heart deeply, igniting a passionate trust in God's promises. Delight in Him, commit your way to Him, and experience the wonders He has in store for you. God's love and blessings will overflow, bringing joy and fulfillment to your life. It is speaking from chapter 37 of the book of Psalms, and it says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. In verse 6, it says, He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday Sunday. In verse 7, it continues, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him, do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. In verse 7, the psalmist advises us not to become indignant or envious of those who prosper on their path. We mustn't believe that the grass is greener on the other side, that someone else's life is better than ours. What we often witness today is people constantly comparing themselves to others. But don't compare yourself to anyone else. You are unique and exceptional. Don't compare your beauty, your blessings, or your possessions to others. That's what verse 7 is telling us, rest in the Lord, wait for Him, and don't be indignant because others are prospering on their path. Sometimes, people feel upset because their sister or brother got married while they haven't, or their neighbor bought a car while they haven't. I once received a message from a sister who said, my neighbor managed to renovate her house, and I haven't. I'm so sad. I told her, my sister, rest in the Lord. Don't be indignant. I precisely conveyed what verse 7 is saying. Don't feel upset because someone is prospering ahead of you. On the contrary, rejoice in your brother's victory. One day, you will be able to renovate your house, fulfill your dreams. We don't need to be saddened by others' prosperity while we wait. Know that God has the perfect timing, and at the right time, blessings will come into your life, prospering and blessing you immensely. So, don't despair, don't be saddened by those who prosper on their path. That's what the psalm is all about. In verse 7, it says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him, do not be indignant because of those who prosper in their ways, because of the person who carries out wicked schemes. In verse 8, it continues, Refrain from anger and turn from wrath, do not fret, 
it leads only to evil. The Bible tells us that we should not repay evil with evil but instead overcome evil with good. When we respond to evil with kindness, we resemble God and become true children of God. In verse 9, it says, For evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord will inherit the land. So, wait upon the Lord, for you will inherit the land. You will prosper and flourish. In the place of your shame, God will give you double honor. In the place of your downfall, the Lord will lift you up with power and honor your life. Therefore, rest in the Lord and wait for Him, for He will do even more in your life. This is what the Word says in Psalm 37, verse 9. For evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord will inherit the land. Verse 10 goes on to say, A little while, and the wicked will be no more, though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. In these verses, 10 and 11, we see that the meek will inherit the land. They will abound in peace and prosperity. However, in verse 12, it says, The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. That's how the wicked act. They are filled with anger towards those who are in the presence of God, those who walk in integrity. Never compromise your life with God. Verse 13 tells us, The Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. God is not moved by the wicked, for he sees that their day of judgment is approaching. The wicked have drawn their swords and bent their bows to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those who walk in righteousness. But their swords will pierce their own hearts, and their bows will be broken. Those who prepare a pit for you will fall into the same pit they have dug against your life. Know that you are protected by God. In verse 16, it says, Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. Look at how powerful this verse is. It is better to have little and be righteous than to possess the wealth of many wicked. What good is it for a person to have great riches but lose their soul? What good is it to have wealth but lack peace of mind? However, even with little in hand, no, my brothers and sisters, that little becomes much with God. God can multiply what seems insignificant. Verse 17 declares, For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the righteous, and their inheritance will endure forever. In verse 19, it says, In times of disaster they will not wither, in days of famine they will enjoy plenty. Look at this beautiful promise, my brothers and sisters. God is speaking to us in this verse. He is saying that in times of trouble, you will not be ashamed. The Lord will honor you, and your inheritance will remain forever. In times of crisis and calamity, you will prosper. The world may be in turmoil, but we are in Christ Jesus. With God, even in times of scarcity, we will be abundantly satisfied. Verse 20 continues, But the wicked will perish, though the Lord's enemies are like the flowers of the field, they will be consumed, they will go up in smoke. Look at how weighty this is. God is saying that the wicked will perish. Who are the wicked? They are those who do not serve the Lord, those who do not believe in God, those who blaspheme and ridicule His name. They are those who are distant from God. The verse says that the wicked will perish, and the enemies of the Lord will vanish like smoke. Showing compassion and borrowing without repaying is the act of the wicked, and it's not my words but the Bible, Psalm 37 verse 21. In verse 22, it says, 
For those blessed by the Lord will inherit the land, but those cursed by him will be destroyed. Here, we can see the blessing of Abraham, for God had said to Abraham that those who bless him will be blessed, and those who curse him will be cursed. This means that God is the shield of Abraham, and he is also your protective shield. In verse 23, it says, The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Let me tell you something important about this verse. It says that the steps of a good person are established by the Lord. What does this mean? It means that when you are in the presence of God, when you make decisions in His presence, He confirms your steps. If you start a business honestly and believe that God will prosper it, He will prosper it because the steps of a good person are confirmed by the Lord. As Psalm 1 also says, whatever the righteous person does will prosper. There is a blessing of prosperity in the life of a good person, whether it be a man or a woman. God has blessings in store for those who are good. So, be good to others, be good to yourself, because the steps of a good person will be confirmed by the Lord. Verse 24 goes even further and says, Though they stumble, they will not fall, for the Lord upholds them with his hand. Look at this powerful verse. It shows that even if this man or woman, who is righteous in the presence of God, stumbles, they will not be cast down because the Lord holds them with his hand. If you fall, God will lift you up with his mighty power. The righteous may fall seven times, but God will raise them up eight times. The Lord will not allow you to remain prostrate, he will lift you up with his power. In verse 25, the psalmist declares, I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. This means that there is prosperity in the lives of those who seek the Lord. In verse 26, it says, They are always generous and lend freely, their children will be a blessing. God is saying that your life will be blessed, and so will the lives of your children and your children's children. This is God's promise for our lives. Do not lose heart. In verse 27, it says, Turn from evil and do good, then you will dwell in the land forever. Verse 28 reminds us that the Lord loves justice and will not forsake his faithful ones. They are preserved forever, but the offspring of the wicked will be cut off. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom, and their tongue talks of what is just. Let's take this moment to pray and seek God's guidance. Amen. In verse 31, it says, The law of their God is in their hearts, their feet do not slip. Verse 32 acknowledges that the wicked plot against the righteous and seek to kill them, but in verse 33, it assures us that the Lord will not leave them in their hands. God will provide deliverance for us. God will provide deliverance for you. He will not leave you in the hands of the wicked, that's what verse 32 and verse 33 are saying. The Lord will not abandon you or condemn you when you are judged. Verse 34 encourages us to wait upon the Lord, to trust in Him, and to keep His ways. He will exalt us to inherit the land, and we will witness the removal of the wicked. Verse 35 describes how the wicked may appear to prosper with great power, like a green tree in its homeland. But their time will pass, and they will be no more. I searched, but they could not be found. Verse 37 urges us to observe the blameless and consider the upright, for their future is one of peace. On the other hand, transgressors will be destroyed, and the relics of the wicked will vanish. To conclude, 
Verse 39 and 40 remind us that the salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in times of trouble, for they trust in Him. Psalm 37 reveals that God is for the righteous and against the wicked. It assures us that the righteous, the meek, will inherit the land and prosper in it. Meanwhile, those who practice iniquity will face annihilation by God. This psalm is a guarantee that the righteous will experience a season of prosperity, peace, and blessings on this earth. Therefore, let us embrace and claim all the blessings recorded in Psalm 37 for our lives. Let us pray together, seeking to possess every blessing outlined in Psalm 37. May the promises of God manifest abundantly in our lives. In this prayer, close your eyes and join me as we pray, O Holy Spirit of God, here in your presence, we have just read Psalm 37. In this psalm, Lord, we see and confirm that you are a God of prosperity. We have read verse by verse, and we understand that Psalm 37 brings blessings of spiritual and material abundance to those who seek you, to those who worship you. Humbly, we ask that you grant us the spiritual blessings and gifts outlined in Psalm 37 in our lives. Come and prosper us in this land, Bless our health, our finances, our emotions. Bless our families, our homes. Lord, protect us, deliver us, guard us, and defend us in the name of Jesus. May all the spiritual blessings recorded in Psalm 37 be confirmed in our lives for the glory and praise of your name, God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Send your provision into the life of the woman who listens to me and the life of the man who hears me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, grant us your blessing of prosperity. Grant us your peace. May the Lord grant us the desires of our hearts according to your will, and may your name be glorified, Lord, in the blessings we receive in our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and ask all these things. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Thanks be to God. All honor and glory be to you, Lord. Amen. My brother and sister, may God bless you. As I come to the end of this message, I want to invite those of you who haven't subscribed yet to the channel to do so. And to those who are already subscribed, I encourage you to share this video with a friend so that they too can subscribe to the channel and let the name of Jesus be glorified through these prayers. Sending you a big hug, and may the peace of the Lord be with you. Remember, you were born to overcome and live out every promise of God.